All right, everyone. Again, I wanted to thank you for joining us tonight for uh, the City of Boston's Northern Avenue Bridge Design Update Meeting. Um, a couple of housekeeping uh, items. Uh, one is we have several documents that are posted on the website. Um, those are the agenda for tonight's meeting, a comment sheet that you can download and either mail in or uh, fill out and scan an email uh, to our email address. We also have a right of way document that uh, for folks who uh, have property abutting uh, the bridge um, that you can get information on that. The PowerPoint will also be is also posted as a PDF and there's also a link to uh, the YouTube channel where you can see the animations that we're going to be showing this evening. So the other thing I wanted to just uh, run through real quickly, I think a lot of people are familiar with Zoom, but I just wanted to go a little bit, uh, go through the, um, the process. Um, we're gonna keep everybody on mute until the team is finished with their presentation. Um, and part of that is um, also to prevent any uh, disruptions, unintentional disruptions of the meeting. Uh, once the presentation is completed, uh, you can ask questions in two ways. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, uh, you may have to hover your cursor over it. Uh, you will see either a Q&A or a raise hand uh, feature. Um, we'll be, you can ask questions via Q&A at any time during the meeting, but we won't be answering them until after the presentation. Um, we will go through the typed Q&A questions first and answer those um, after that. Uh, anybody who has additional questions will um, go through the raised hands um, as they're received. And uh, finally, as well, folks who are joining us on cell phone, um, you can press star nine and uh, that will raise your hand and we'll recognize you. Uh, the way we do that for the phone is the last four digits of your number and we'll ask you to identify yourself for us. Uh, at this point, um, I think we're ready to start uh, the presentation. Great, Nancy. Is that uh, is that my cue? Oh, sorry. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. How are you? Um, so thank you so much for welcoming us, uh, and really to the entire Regina Villa team um, for all of your hard work on this project. And really, on behalf of the mayor, I want to thank everyone who has joined in in this conversation, uh, not just tonight and not just over the last two years, but throughout the entire planning history around this bridge. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Chris Osgood. I have the honor of serving as Mayor Walsh's Chief of the Streets. And um, tonight, I just want to point out that what we're presenting is simply one more step forward as a result of that dialogue. And we believe that really together, uh, we've created a design that's really been worthy of the conversation we've been having, a design that really puts people first. Uh, that design emerged from four major challenges that we were trying to address, uh, challenges that many on this uh, meeting probably know uh, quite well, had the interest in honoring history around increasing resiliency, around improving mobility, and around creating a destination uh, here in the Fort Point Channel. Um, to go through sort of our, our thinking and uh, what you will see, in terms of honoring history, um, the design we're advancing is one that uh, we think reflects and reinterprets uh, the historic profile of the bridge so that it remains both an icon on the skyline as well as of our history. You'll also see in, the, in terms of the resiliency goal that as we look at the bridge design, we sort of analyzed uh, uh, the impact of sea level rise and knew that we needed to raise the bridge to ensure that it provided an enduring connection in the face of a changing harbor. Looking at our third goal around increasing uh, mobility, perhaps the area that we've had the most conversation and the most debate about. Uh, there's many people who certainly feel that uh, the bridge should be for walking and biking only. And there are also a number of people who feel really strongly that a public bridge should be a bridge that any member of the public should be able to drive across. So the range of opinions are certainly all a lot and very well heard. Ultimately, the direction that we have chosen is a bridge uh, that we think is the best solution for one that connects uh, our downtown with what is perhaps New England's fastest growing and still not yet fully built out uh, neighborhood of the South Boston Waterfront. It's a bridge that is going to be open for walking and biking, as well as for transit buses and shuttles, but closed to general traffic, as well as taxis and Ubers and Lyfts. Our city, its health, its climate, its continued growth really relies on more people shifting to active transportation, walking and biking, 
and shared transportation, shared, shared transportation things like uh, shuttle buses and, uh, and public transit. And the bridge design really reflects that belief. It's also something which the analysis showed moves the most people. But that analysis and certainly the community comment uh, really put the spotlight that this bridge has to be one that works for people who are on foot or on bike, really one that puts those modes first and in general simply puts people first. And you see that perhaps most strikingly with the way in which this bridge creates a destination. A destination that we think uh, can not only bring together two neighborhoods, can not only connect people to the Fort Point Channel and to the harbor beyond, uh, but really invite people from across all of Boston to this spot in the city. And I would say that we would not have gotten to this place, as many would know, uh, without the inspired ideas and uh, incredible advocacy of so many. I mean, we really appreciate uh, all of the insight and all of the input that we've gotten throughout this process to date and that we will continue to get in the days ahead. And really on behalf of the mayor, I wanna thank everybody for that. And I wanna acknowledge the mayor's leadership of really putting the emphasis on a bridge uh, that focuses on people. I wanna thank in particular the mayor's advisory task force, uh, an incredible uh, group who really provided a lot of uh, great ideas and great support throughout this process. And thank the AACOM team, the Regina Villa team, Eddie Padmodi Poitro uh, and the city team uh, for all of their hard work in getting us to this point. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to the person who's really been leading this effort for the city of Boston, uh, our city engineer, Parajaya Singh. Myself. Thank you, thank you so much, Chief. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope you all are having a very safe evening. And first and foremost, let me introduce myself again to those who may not know me. My name is Para Jai Singer. I'm your city engineer. And it is absolutely my uttermost privilege to shepherd this amazing project. Uh, it, it's a unique opportunity to the city of Boston so that we can create a world-class asset or a product that is absolutely befitting of Boston. So let me introduce my fellow uh, partners in the Public Works team, they being, next slide. Oops, excuse me. Okay, so again, uh, uh, from the city side, it's a three-person team, again, my name is Para Jaisinger, and I am supported by Benjamin Sun, who is our chief structural engineer. Ben, if you could say hi so people will know. Okay, you may want to unmute Ben. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Glad Ben. To be, to be here, and I uh, hope you have a enjoy, enjoyable evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. And uh, also helping Ben is Joe Fleury, who is the principal bridge engineer with Public Works. Joe, if you can say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Carl. Thank you, Joseph. So uh, that is the city side. And obviously, you can imagine it is just not Public Works, but we have an amazing consultant team. This is almost like a who's who in the business of creating bridges and amazing places. Uh, uh, asset of this nature cannot be pulled together without the visionary guidance of our architects. And first and foremost, that is Eddie Patmody Poitro. She is with Urban Ideas Lab based in Boston. And she is an Waiko. Uh, so Eddie, if you could say hi. Hi, uh, how are you? Thank you, Bara. It is a collaborative effort, I have to say. Thank you. And supporting Eddie is James Mark from Beam Consultants. Uh, should, I'm sorry, Beam Architects. They are stationed out of London, England. Uh, we are having the best of the best, which the planet has. So James, if you could be ever so kind to introduce yourself. Hi. Hi. Thank you, James. <laughs> And so, uh, and then right in the middle of everything is AECOM led by Joe Allwarden, who is their main program manager, lead bridge engineer. And at this point, I will have Joe introduce his team. So Mr. Allwarden, 
Yes. Thank you. Uh, Thank you everyone for joining. Um, as shown on the slide here, and as Par mentioned, I, I'm the project manager for the uh, from AECOM, and AECOM has been tasked with uh, leading the design as the prime consultant for the project. And you see here, this is the list of the primary firms on the screen who have been contributed to the project and the process so far. Um, either from design point of view or as owner's representative. And we really appreciate the opportunity to help uh, with such an important project and really for the future of uh, Boston transportation. Thank you, Joe. Sure. Now, in addition to the consultants, as Chief Oscar mentioned, None of this could, could happen without the amazing, able leadership and participation by the Mayoral Advisory Task Force. I would like all of you to take a moment to see those that are in this list. As the consultants, these are some of the most prominent members in our community that have assisted us. And I want to single out two amazing individuals who has served this task force. First being the gentleman who is at the Better City, Rick Domino, who is part of a Better City and who is continuing to strive to make Boston a better city. And to balance that, we also have uh, Sarah McCammon from the Fort Point Neighborhood Association who has strive to bring the voices of our neighbors into this meeting, I'm sorry, into this task force. So we truly, truly, truly thank the advisory task force for all their diligent work. So through these three entities, which is the task force, the consultants, we've had countless, countless uh, meetings, public engagement meetings. I think uh, last count, it was close to about 35 and this week, the culmination of all of that effort. So without much further ado, I would like to have you sort of, you know, as they say in a plane, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show because you're going to see something absolutely special tonight. It's, a, it's bold, it's beautiful, and it is absolutely, absolutely worthy of Boston. So that being said, uh, we are going to turn over the presentation to my able partner, Joe Fleury, who will walk you through the rest of at least a portion of this presentation. So, Joseph. Thanks, Par. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining tonight. Um, let's see here. All right, uh, we'll start off with the brief history of the bridge. Uh, the bridge has been with us for over a hundred years. Uh, it opened originally in 1908. Um, in 1918, we added rail lines to the bridge. So we actually had train traffic uh, traversing in and out of the, the uh, South Boston seaport over this bridge. In 1970, those rails were removed, um, leaving the bridge just a vehicular traffic, pedestrian, cyclists. Um, because of some uh, structural issues, we closed the bridge down to vehicles in 1997, um, and it became a pedestrian bridge for the last um, 17 years of its life. Uh, in 2014, uh, uh, 2014 uh, the bridge was closed to pedestrians as it uh, could no longer handle any loading. With all that said, the bridge is much loved. Um, we've gotten countless comments submitted to our project website, um, you know, professing their love for the bridge. Um, these are just a select few that we, we pulled out to put in the presentation tonight, um, but this is far from the only ones that we have seen. The bridge is part of uh, the fabric of, of the city of Boston. 
Um, this is a still from uh, WBZ's nightly news, and you can see the bridge uh, featured prominently in the backdrop. Um, you know, it, it's often that we see the city represented with a shot, you know, along the Harbor Walk um, of the bridge with the city in the background. But the bridge has fallen into disrepair. Um, I'm not sure uh, how well everybody can see these photos, but uh, those holes in the steel are large enough to climb through. Um, pictures like this is why we had to shut down the bridge uh, to all traffic, including pedestrians, back in 2014. Um, it is considered to be structurally unsound. We have fixed it in the open position um, to allow maritime traffic, but the Coast Guard has informed the city that they believe the bridge is a hazard to navigation due to the risk of it falling into the channel. Um, and they would like us to uh, do something, uh, remove it or replace it. Um, here's a, a you know timeline of what we've been doing since the bridge uh, was closed back in 2014. Um, a few years back in uh, 2016, we requested approval um, to remove uh, and relocate the superstructure. So all this deal, um, everything from the piers up, we had proposed to move it um, to dry land uh, while we figured out what to do next. Uh, 2016, uh, there was an ideas competition we reached out to all the, the great minds of Boston and beyond um, to give us some idea of um, what we should do with the bridge and this you know, fantastic location at the mouth of the Four Point Channel. Um, we got some excellent ideas and uh, like to think that we've incorporated some of that into um, the product that we're gonna show you here tonight. Uh, May, 2018, um, we started the, uh, commenced the Mayor's Advisory Task Force um, we brought together uh, part of, you know, showed to the list of the 20 odd um, members, groups, um, concerned uh, citizens that um, helped us shape what we will do with, with this uh, Northern Avenue bridge. Um, we concluded that uh, process this past December um, and it, it really uh, helped us create the product that we have today. Um, you know, we, we got some, some great feedback. Um, they really pushed us and I think it led to an awesome product. Uh, and since then, we, especially AECOM, has been uh, cranking out the design um, and, you know, gonna show you the results of their hard work here in just a few minutes. So, uh, Chief Osgood touched briefly upon this. Um, you know, the charge of the, the mayor's advisory task force, these are the four, you know, key axioms that we took out of that, honoring history, improving mobility, increasing resiliency, and creating a destination. Um, so we got all that out of, of 12 meetings with the task force. Um, there were 26 different stakeholder briefings, um, you know, neighborhood groups, uh, advocacy um, organizations, Regulatory agencies, um, you know, this, these 26 is just in the, since the, uh, the task force has been commenced, um, there's been countless others um, prior to that. And we've held two community meetings um, similar to this one uh, in 2018 and one last, uh, last June, almost a year ago. All right, so what does all that mean? Uh, what did we get out of all those meetings? Uh, honoring history. Uh, we want to reflect the historic profile of the old bridge. Um, and, and you'll be able to see that in just a few minutes. Um, improving mobility. Uh, focus on walking, biking, transit, and emergency vehicles. Uh, as Chief Osgood said earlier, um, the primary focus needs to be on pedestrians and cyclists uh, and transit, as those are going to move the, the greatest amount of people. Um, passenger vehicles, uh, we saw limited utility, uh, including them on the bridge. Um, increasing the resiliency. Um, the bridge will be raised uh, higher than anticipated sea level rise. Um, 
everything that you see on the bridge, all, all the surfaces will be above the 2070 um, 100 year flood. So we will, uh, sorry about that. Uh, we will be above any anticipated sea level rise um, and creating a destination. Uh, this one was the most important for us. Uh, we want to create, a, you know, just an, an awesome um, location for people to gather uh, at the mouth of the Four Point Channel. Um, and we're really excited to show you what we, we've come up with. Uh, this is people first experience. Uh, so these are kind of the, the words we've been living by these past few years, uh, that people first experience and uh, go old or go bold. Um, if we can't, you know, salvage the old bridge and um, rehabilitate it, then go bold. We don't want a um, cookie cutter uh, bridge just going over the Four Point Channel. Um, this location deserves better than that. So with that, here is our new Northern Avenue Bridge concept. Um, Uh, what we're calling the, Kate, okay, I don't know if you op optimize it. Um, it's yes, a little I did. My end. Uh, I did optimize it, yes. So, uh, here is, uh, again, the new Northern Avenue Bridge. Um, we have uh, two uh, ribbons going along the outside of this new decorative truss. Um, this truss is not meant to exactly replicate the the old um, the old existing truss, um, but to to reinterpret it in a new modern um, way. Uh, and we'll get a little bit more into that. Um, we'll have the architects. Uh, describe you know their thoughts on that um, in a few minutes but the the two ribbons on the outside um, the one on the harbor side uh, facing out towards Rose Wharf uh, will be um, exclusively for the use of pedestrians um, it's uh, it's going to be a pedestrian only space uh, you know a gathering spot excellent views um, and the the second ribbon uh, the one on the Moakley side um, we propose to have that that's the uh the side that will have transit um a bike lanes and a pedestrian facility in between those two ribbons and, and this is the most exciting part is the uh the, what we're calling the promenade this is grand gathering space on the water um you know really get you get you close to the water um again excellent views of the harbor um a place to to come sit um, and just enjoy uh, the skylines in the city. Uh, in the uh, foreground here is a uh, stair um, with an accessible ramp um, with some stadium seating overlooking the promenade. And in the background on the far side of this picture, uh, there's a ramp coming down, um, accessible ramp coming down uh, with some nice landscaping. Now I will show you a video um, that will kind of take you through the entirety of the design. So if you could hold on for a second. Okay, we want to make sure. Go ahead, Vijay. Sorry, Kate, is the screen fully optimized so that the viewing audience gets the best? Yes, it is now. Awesome. Actually, uh, Joe, if you could hold on for a second, uh, I want to again uh, publicly acknowledge uh, Joyce Lenahan, who is the city's chief of policy, uh, part of the mayor's cabinet staff, who has also joined this meeting. So, sorry. Uh, Joe, hit the play button. My bad.
So that is the new Northern Avenue Bridge. Um, so in a few minutes, I will uh, I'll hand it off to our architect um, or one of our architects to kind of to run you through the model itself um, and give you a few more views. Um, but in the meantime, um, as I said earlier, uh, the old bridge was much loved. And what are we going to do uh, to commemorate the old bridge? Uh, what we have done um, is gone out and we took a, a LIDAR survey, a laser um, survey of the entire structure. Um, you know, this is down to the um, hundredth, of, hundredth of a foot. Um, and we're able to capture um, each and every member, bolt, rivet, um, pile in the water, uh, you know, all of that of, of the old bridge um, so that we can recreate it in a, a virtual reality experience, um, which again, uh, you'll, you'll see in a few minutes. Um, but here's just a very raw, um, sorry, I hit that twice. Uh, this is a very raw look. Um, that data, we were able to go in and use this and do some interpolation um, and really recreate the Oak Ridge, you know, as it looked uh, today. And then we'll be able to even, um, you know, show you what the bridge looked like when it was first built or, or at any point um, throughout its history. Uh, and one last thing that I'm going to speak on uh, before I hand off is uh, we will. Hey, Kate, you took the screen back, so if you could go back one. Uh, here we go. Uh, so we will uh, be looking to incorporate public art onto the bridge. Um, this project has been identified as a, a percent for art project. Um, what that means is the city uh, places 1% of the capital budget um, into a, uh, an arts uh, fund um, so that we can incorporate public art into projects like this. Um, so that's something we're really excited about uh, working closely with our um, Department of Arts and Culture. Um, and they will soon uh, be convening an advisory committee um, and soliciting feedback um, and then soon after that we'll be drafting an RFP and uh, convening an artist selection committee uh, so that we can pick an artist and, and have that incorporated um, into into this project so that's something that we're really excited about um, that you can keep your eye out for uh, when we're coming um, soon um, with that I will toss it back to Kate um, who will introduce uh, the next phase of the uh, presentation Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't unmute myself for a second. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, thanks, Joe. I think we're all super excited about that, and I hope that video gives you an idea how uh, exciting we envision this project. So, what I'm going to show you now is uh, some of the engineering plans uh, being developed by the project team. Um, so. Uh, Sorry, Kate, I don't know what I just did. You just, uh, if you click on the screen and then you can start it. Here. Let me All start. Right, you get me to the right spot. Apologize. There you go. Just click on your screen and yes, there. Okay, there we go. So this, uh, Here's an overall plan of the bridge um, as depicted in the video rendering you just saw. You can see it starts out narrow at the ends um, and then opens up in the center with the two ribbons that Joe described, uh, the harbor side on the upper part of the page and the Moakley side on the lower side. Um, there are access structures between the two ribbons to access that center promenade area. And uh, those are enclosed by that architectural uh, truss structure up above. Here's a plan a little more focused on the west end near Atlantic Avenue. 
Um, this shows the connection to Atlantic Avenue and the Harbor Walk from the north. And also access is maintained to uh, the adjacent properties like the Coast Guard building and the James Hook property. Similarly, this is a picture zoomed in at the eastern end, the seaport end of the bridge, uh, showing the transition off of the bridge on this side to Atlanta, uh, to Northern Avenue on the right-hand side. And it shows the connections that were shown in that rendering of the uh, Harbor Walk to the north by the courthouse building, and then uh, down through Old Sleeper Street. The, uh, here is a structural plan and elevation view of the west half of the bridge. Um, and you can see from this elevation or side view at the bottom half of this page um, that uh, we are reconstructing the abutment on the west side, the Boston side, which is on the left hand side of this uh, picture. Um, we're also constructing a new pier, uh, which is labeled as Pier 2 there. Um, in about the middle of the screen, uh, just a little to the west of the existing bridge pier that is there, and the existing bridge pier will be removed down to below the channel bottom. Um, you can also see the pile supported promenade in the middle area. That elevation of that promenade is set above the projected flood elevation for the uh, sea level rise that Joe mentioned earlier. Also, the entire bridge structure will be above the future projected uh, sea level rise elevation. The, the other thing that shows up on this plan and elevation view is the navigational channel just to the right of the promenade. We are matching the clearance of the navigational channel of the just upstream Moakley Bridge, which is 16 feet above mean high water. So that's all depicted in these planes. Here's the same, uh, the second half of this uh, plan and elevation view on the right hand side or the eastern side. Um, similarly, the abutment here on the right side is being reconstructed uh, along the seawall. There's a new pier adjacent to the existing, just like on the other side, uh, which is on the left hand side in this picture. And uh, the end span in this area is also to be uh, reconstructed as part of the project. Um, here's a um, longitudinal section view, which meaning this is a section cut right through the middle of the bridge uh, in the promenade area. So this really shows you the um, access structures promenade. The one coming from the left side is the one coming from the Rose Kennedy Greenway side down to the promenade. The one on the right is coming from the seaport side. The one on the right is Effectively level surface uh, with um, access to the promenade with stairs and ramps. That has to be so to clear the navigational channel on that right hand side of the promenade. The, uh, the last uh, kind of technical drawing I'm going to show you is this one is a cross section of the bridge, meaning it's cut uh, right through the bridge looking uh, towards the seaport side. Uh, the top one at the top of your view is cut in the area before the bridge splits into the two ribbons when it's a solid width bridge. Uh, the one on the lower side is after the ribbons are split. So the ribbon on the right would be the um, uh, the Moakley side ribbon and the one on the left would be the um, harbor side ribbon. And that area in the middle is that ramp heading down to the promenade. And uh, you can see also the structure above for that, um, that truss uh, structure. I did, I'm going to go back real quickly. I did forget to mention one point here on the longitudinal section, because I think it shows up best in the engineering plans here, is that upper, I did want to mention that upper struck, um, truss structure um, that, as Joe mentioned, is really serving to, uh, uh, provide a um, reference to the old bridge 
but does so in a way that uses new materials and is not made to try to mimic the old bridge, but gives you the feeling and also the sense that you would have gotten crossing the bridge when you go down into that promise. So I meant to point that out when I was on that. Um, so that's a summary of some of the um, engineering plans. And now, uh, PJ, I will turn it back to you just for uh, next steps. Whoops, sorry. I think you're muted, Tara. Wait, I can't seem to go back one. Yes. Back. Okay. Uh, you go back one, Kate. Yeah. I think Tanner's coming up on the animation. Oh no, we need uh, par to, there's one more slide we missed. Oh, okay. Can you back up one slide? Tara has control now. I do. There we go, so let me just uh, set that up for you. Just one slide, Kate, there, yep. that one. Yep, that's it. Hmm. There. There we go. Thank you, Kate. So, uh, Joe, thank you so much for both Joe Fleury and Joe Allmorton. Thank you so much for that very detailed presentation. Uh, many of you might be wondering, so what are the next steps? What's going to happen? So as much that is to happen this year, we are looking forward to finishing the 25% design before the second quarter of this year and are on track to finish the design, the 100% design before the year is out and advertise this project for construction. We are expecting major construction to be taking place next year and hopefully looking forward to uh, the nice year 2022, around the spring when flowers are blooming, we can have this project uh, set up for an urban cutting where we have integrated public art. So we are all extremely excited and cannot emphasize the amazing uh, efforts by all parties, including all of you who have been so diligent, patient, and giving us guidance. And when I say you, the citizens of Boston, our larger community. So before we go to the Q&A, just want to emphasize two uh, parts about this bridge, both the old and the new. So we are going to take about five more minutes of giving you a live animation of what that means. So if we can transfer the controls over to Tanner. And Tanner, if you can do your thing. So Kate. Tanner, please control. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tanner Hawkyard. I'm with the um, AECOM architecture team, um, working with Joe and uh, the city, and of course, Eddie and James, uh, extremely close. So um, here we're going to start off by walking you through a virtual reality experience that we've created for the old historic uh, Northern Avenue Bridge. So we'll start off here on the Harbor Walk next to the courthouse on the seaport side of the Four Point Channel. Um, which gives you a view of the old Northern Avenue Bridge as it exists today. Um, our team has combined that LIDAR survey that you saw moments ago with the existing drawings of the bridge, and we built a virtual reality experience that's meant to preserve the memory of the old bridge. Um, and as we move around, you can really see all the detail that's gone into creating um, the reality of this historic experience. We can even move um, as you see here onto the bridge. So right now we're at the center of the old swing span uh, in the North Bay that was enjoyed by many when the bridge was closed down to vehicle traffic and open to pedestrians. You can see all the minute details built exactly as they were in the original form from the decking to the connection points uh, to the steel members above you. Uh, 
Um, this third view is from the Rose Kennedy Greenway side of the approach span, which looks toward the seaport district. And here you're able to experience not only the detail seen in the previous view, but you can also see the bridge as it was in the open position as boats would be traveling through the navigational channel. Um, you can see the pile field and the tender's house in front of you as well. And this final image is um, highlighting the footings of the bridge spans and the detail under the bridge that would be seen from anyone traveling via boat through the navigational channel. You can also see the historic bridge and all the central span structural members, as well as the deck line to your left in the open position. So again, this is meant as a preservation tool to be able to commemorate um, the exact bridge as well as the, um, well, the exact bridge as is seen and used um, in better condition than it was, than it is today. So now we're actually gonna jump to, let's see. So now we're gonna jump to the bridge design, um, also in virtual reality, but this is the new design that's focused completely on delivering the people first experience. So we'll start here on the Harbor Walk outside the Coast Guard building, looking at the new design from, for the Northern Avenue Bridge. And as we walk toward the approaches, we have redesigned accessible routes via this ramp and stair, which is, you meander, which is you meander upwards, allow you to experience exciting views of the Boston Harbor and add a detail of the bridge in front of you. We'll now turn back and make our way up to the bridge deck along this pedestrian railing. All the way up, we're capturing those incredible views and then turning to see some of the bridge and its exciting approach features at this point. This completely unique layout comes uh, to a decision point here where one can either choose a direct route over or slip into the bridge architecture, which envelops an urban utopia of landscape, garden spaces, seating areas, and an overall sense of this people first experience that we're trying to capture. The enclosure above is designed from a, a unique combination of new steel plates, as well as the repurposed vertical members from the old historic bridge, which we're extremely excited about having the opportunity to reuse and celebrate integrally, integrally with those features. So you can see those here in this view represented as light beacons on the bridge. We can add yet another layer to the people first experience by imagining a new design for public art along the sequential sloped area as represented above you. This is just a representation, but will continue to be designed. You'll see at the center, we have commemorated some of the mechanical features and here I'll go to a on dusk mode so that you can really enhance that experience. So here we're adding another layer of that people first experience and you can see um, the mechanical features from the, that used to exist inside the old drum that was meant to turn the bridge, um, which is intended to further preserve some of the more important qualities of the historic storyline um, and the old pedestrian experience. At this point, you'll also notice the new design greets you with two framed views, one at the Four Point Channel waterfront here, and one of the greater spans of the Boston Harbor here, where you'll find even more places to gather and enjoy this new people first experience. We're then met with a beautiful waterfront view completely unique to the city of Boston, which puts you directly in the midst of an oceanic experience that was not possible in the past. And as we turn back to view the new design, we'll start to, we've started to illuminate the historic profile of the old bridge, which we're delighted to reinterpret as lit features at the top of the new architectural enclosure above. So you can see that here. As we move back towards the central feature, We'll take this delicate meandering ramp slash stair seating area, completely accessible up toward the level of the east ramp in this garden area of space. This has been completely designed around the movement of people and the meandering experiences and the informal gathering spaces as well as encompassed by the 
the informal gathering spaces are as well encompassed by the architectural enclosure above. This is all adding to that people first experience, which we're really trying to captivate and express throughout the entire interior of this bridge. We'll now exit towards the harbor, toward the harbor walk at the courthouse building. And as we move down this area, you'll see here that we have likewise provided accessible routes to continue the journey off the bridge and onto the waterfront, waterfront and harbor walk towards the seaport and the seaport district. We'll bring it back to a daytime view. And as we turn back toward the bridge, we're now gonna choose the more direct route towards the harbor side ribbon, which has been designed to simply highlight and accentuate the views of the harbor beyond. This open pathway here encourages movement between the expansive views and the intimate internal people first experience of the inside of the bridge. You'll see garden, these gardened areas from above, pedestrian seating spaces, and this central turning mechanism that we've memorialized at the center. As we turn around and look at the harbor view, you'll see at the peak of the bridge, we arrive at this expansive view overlooking the promenade below on both sides of the harbor and out towards the harbor front beyond. You'll see this rhythmic pattern um, expressed in the walkway, which continues the rhythm of the truss elements and the, and the vertical uh, historical elements of the bridge above. And this elevation of the bridge provides continuous views all the way from one side to the other and encourages the pedestrian to utilize both a direct and enriched experience on the Northern Avenue Bridge for this people first experience. Oops. And are you all set? Yep. Awesome. So I think, Kate, it is time for our question and answer portion of this today's meeting. And I want to take this opportunity to first of all recognize any elected officials that were at the meeting or might still be at the meeting. Uh, we have almost 250 participants. So I'm not sure if I have photographic memory of all the names I've seen. So if I miss someone, please, a thousand apologies on my part. I believe I saw Councillor Michelle Wu and Councillor Asabi George and Councillor Michael Flaherty. I think Councillor Michael Flaherty is still here. So, uh, and I don't know whether there are any state or federal uh, elected officials that are here, but uh, would like to give them an opportunity right now to be recognized and or ask a question or uh, just be recognized. So Kate, what is the best way for this to happen in this virtual reality mode, which we are still trying to get used to? So uh, Emily, do you want to um, unmute uh, Councillor Flaherty? That's such a weird way of saying that. Uh, <laughs> yes. Sorry, <laughs> Councillor. Uh, but uh, if we, uh, how do we, council is still there, right? Yeah, Para, can you hear me? Oh, councilor, so good to see you. Absolutely so good to see you. Councilor, okay, uh, let's make sure that if I could hear you, everyone else can hear you. Councilor, the floor is yours. Sure, Para, thank you. I know uh, Senator Collins was on in, in um, City Council Red Flynn. They were on at the very beginning. I know that they're attending other uh, Zoom conferences, but uh, obviously it uh, looks like Oops. Okay. Looks like we lost him. Can we get him back? Okay. Technical. Have me. There we go. Yep. Right. So, uh, Para, um, Senator Collins and, and Council Red Flynn were on at the very beginning um, as well. And I think 
State Representative David Beal's staff is on. Um, they're covering other Zoom, so I'm covering for the for the delegation and uh, Congressman Lynch as well. But uh, obviously, I said, looks like a beautiful bridge. Not quite sure how we're going to be able to pay for it. We'll have to probably reach out to some of our state and federal partners, uh, but we'll figure that out as we move forward. Uh, only concern I had is I, um, with a lot of the uh, the pedestrian, um, and uh, as I think it was described a little while ago, as the meandering crowd, um, I would hope that there'll be no um, diesel vehicles. Uh, I saw there was a bus there, but uh, I would hate to have folks just breathing in diesel fumes. So if there are going to be vehicles, I hope that they would be the LNGs or uh, or gas. If, if we got the diesel shuttle buses or diesel buses uh, traversing over the bridge in close proximity to folks who are breathing those fumes in, um, I, I would I would have to ask you just based on the on the video slide there that you have to revisit that. Um, nonetheless, if it's going to be LNG or they're going to be uh, electric uh, and or uh, gas run, that's a different story. But I just throw the caution flag up. I, I just saw how close um, the buses were to, um, to, to folks sitting and, and, uh, and taking in the view. And I would hate to have them breathing in uh, some of those toxic fumes. So other than that, uh, look forward to hearing uh, from um, uh, members of the public and get back to the drawing board with, uh, with you guys as to how we're going to pay for it. I'll do my part to reach out to partners uh, at the state and the federal level to try to make this uh, make this come through. Beautiful design, Councillor. Thank you so much for all your support and for your gracious uh, input. And uh, if we, uh, Kate, is there any way for us to find out if we have any other uh, individuals that are representing elected officials who should be given? Uh, just a tiny bit of preference to raise their hand. Sure, uh, sir. The name of the uh, the staff person was um, just trying to find. Uh, How do we do this? Oh, Lord, I wish I was smarter. Well, maybe I would suggest, Kate, that if if someone uh, that represents one of those folks would like to raise their hand and then you could maybe see them at the top of the list. So what I'm, uh, it comes in uh, in order of their hands being raised. So what I would suggest is that they send us a, a Q&A text instead, if possible. Um, Do not see any. Do you see any raised hands, Kate? There are, there are quite a few raised hands, yes. Um, so I'm just running through the names here. Uh, I do not. Uh, hey, it looks like Mike, uh, Councillor Flaherty, uh, raised his hand again. Maybe he can shed some light on who those folks okay. may be. Great, yeah. Uh, Emily, can you um, give him his, the mic? Kate, can you hear me? Yes. So Kate, I'm getting text here saying that the folks that are on the phone, apparently they're not, they're unable, they're, they're not able to unmute. Yes. And, so, uh, and I, I get that from State Representative David Beal and also Senator Collins are joining us by phone and they're both texting me telling me that they're not able to unmute to answer. So that said, um, I'll cover everybody at, on this end on the, on the elected official side. And um, if we've got members of the public that are trying to speak, we, we, uh, might as well, um, we might as well get started. We can unmute them, um, but I would need to know the last four digits of their phone number that they're calling from, Councillor. Okay, I'll let them, I'll let them know that. Yes, Councillor, we are being a little bit careful with uh, some of the more, uh, how can I say this? I'm sure you may have heard that in other Zoom forums, people have been a little bit mischievous in the way they are uh, trying to make their presence be known. And we are trying to be very cautious of uh, not uh, allowing this meeting to be a forum for them to be mischievous. Yes, no, completely understand. So well, maybe even maybe even uh, start off, and then if someone misbehaves, then I guess you change the you change the format. You know. Okay, so uh, Kate, why don't we uh, uh, 
start off with some questions. How do you? Sure. So um, as I had mentioned before, um, um, we will be taking the typed uh, questions and answers first. Um, so I'm going to go through and read them. Um, and uh, then I will pass it off to team members to uh, answer the questions. Um, so with that, the first question we have is from, I believe it was Seth Jaffe. Um, he says, I love the design, wondering about the height of the lower level above sea level. I'm assuming that it is above any potential future flood levels, but there is no information about it in the presentation. Can you address? Uh, Joe? Sure. Sure, Kate. Thanks. And Seth, I hope I answered the question as part of my part of the discussion, but the short answer is yes. The pavilion elevation is set above the uh, future sea level rise. Thank you. We have, I think, 70 questions and we have about 30 minutes left. So let's uh, yeah. try and get to as many questions so, as possible. Okay. Okay. Um, Sarah McCammond, um, and I apologize, Sarah, I should have said this at the opening. Yes, we are recording this meeting and the meeting will be, the recording will be posted on the website as soon as possible. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, Neil Farrow, why do you not show the tower planned for the Hook Lobster property? Uh, I will take that. Uh, we are aware of that project. They are still in the, they haven't finalized things. So we feel that it may be not very prudent to show their project as part of this project. Okay. Paul, Paul Swartz uh, is asking uh, if the bridge is open to shuttles, buses, and emergency vehicles, why isn't that reflected in the renderings? This. Uh, uh, this question may have come in before the presentation. I don't know. So. Okay. So I hope that you saw in the renderings uh, and the video animation that there is a room for the buses. And if emergency vehicles do need to go, it will be on where the buses are. Uh, next question. Yep. Um, Steve Hollinger, why does the lower recreational deck area below the lanes above vary in this rendering from the prior one? I. I think that question has been answered. Okay. Okay. Next one. Um, if it rains, uh, Paul Swartz again, uh, if it rains, won't the vehicle splash water down onto the pedestrians underneath? I could take that, PJ, if you'd like. The, the, Go uh, ahead. The design is such that the ribbons slope away from the center area, and there are actually closed drainage scuppers that take any rainwater, so there won't be there should not be ponding on the bridge that would cause big splashing. I mean, um, so there is a design to take water away from the center area. Okay, Eric Bender is asking, how high is the promenade above the 2070, 100 year flood? Okay, I could take that. I think in round numbers, um, 13, about five feet. The okay. promenade, yeah, about five feet in round numbers. So the plans depict the exact uh, numbers. Next question. Leslie is asking, is the complete middle of the bridge wheelchair accessible? Absolutely. Next question. Okay. Um, Jim Schley, why is bicycle traffic not physically separated from vehicles in this design? Uh, I'll take that thing. Uh, the layout for the bicycles and the buses are right now more schematic at a 25% design. We want to uh, exercise great caution to make sure that uh, that is appropriately designed uh, both in the mixing area and through this area. So uh, that's a detail which we are working on and we will be happy to uh, uh, share that information with you if you could send us an email. Thank you so much, Jim, for your question. Um, sorry, uh, Travis Chapman, this design has more space for cars and pedestrians and the roadway blocks views and sunlight from pedestrians. Um, can we rethink this design? Would the panel consider a true pedestrian bridge? If not, could pedestrians walk above traffic rather than below? Uh, Mr. Chapman, uh, the design which we have right now has gone through a lot of waiting process and uh, I hope you had the opportunity to join those 30 plus public meetings 
and I believe the teams uh, from both the city, uh, we are very confident with the uh, design which we are proposing right now, but we appreciate your thoughts. Okay. Uh, Steve Wilkin, uh, thanks for taking my question, seeking clarification on the shuttle traffic issue. Um, several folks have noticed that shuttle traffic can't be seen on BTD's renderings. I'm wondering why that is, and as a follow-up, what kind of impacts overhead traffic, a similar question, overhead traffic will have on the pedestrian experience on the promenade. So that's part of it is similar. Uh, again, uh, the what's the, da, 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 uh, shuttle traffic issues, uh, even though we are classifying this as transit routes, I doubt there are going to be buses or shuttle buses going every five seconds. So there will be uh, a certain headway frequency, which will be as complementary as possible for moving uh, pedestrians and cyclists more than buses. So I think it will be a right uh, modal balance as uh, needed to manage the overall transportation needs within the seaport area. Okay, Next one. Uh, we have a couple of comments. Um, and they're not questions and I want to thank people for that. Uh, some compliments about uh, the, the uh, bridge being bike people and transit focused and saying it's beautiful. Um, I lost where we are here. Um, I am really concerned about the ends where the, this is uh, Arlene Meisner. I am really concerned about the ends where the ped path and the bus path come together. Will there be any separation? The video seems to show what people walking right next to the bus lane, which is dangerous. Yes, Arlene, we, uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, those details are being looked at very carefully to ensure at the highest level, pedestrian safety, then the safety of bicycles. Uh, so that they don't uh, interact with the bus in a very awkward way. So the schematics which we are showing right now is just a visual representation of the fact that there will be this commingling, but it will be designed in the most thoughtful way. And thank you for your comment. Uh, Anne Lusk is uh, asking, uh, I lost it. Um, uh, she wants to know the total square footage provided to pedestrians versus total square footage provided exclusively to bicyclists. The concern is uh, with COVID-19 having wide enough spaces for bicyclists to travel. Uh, I'll take that quickly. Don't have those numbers, but if you could send us an email through our project website, we will be happy to get that information to you. I'm just, uh, Kate, I'm so concerned about those who are waiting on phone lines to talk to us. And we have 20 minutes to go, so this is almost like lightning crowd. Yeah, uh, we can go. We can go to the phone. Kurt, would you like to do How that? How many more questions are there? I'm trying to get a sense of. We uh, have. There were 75 questions. Yeah. We've answered 14 now. Yeah. I can go to. The, uh, would you like me to go to the phone lines? The phone. I think we should uh, at least just take maybe about five calls from the phones and then uh, go here. Kate, we will take your lead. So you all manage this far more regularly than us. So I am going to look for some uh, phone calls. And if you want, if you're on a phone and you want to call in and raise your hand again, it's star nine. Then um, I think by phone, Kate, maybe are you referring to people that may have raised their hand, PJ? Uh, no. Uh, okay. So. Questions. Can you walk me through how someone is waiting on a phone call? Are they trying to ask a question or are they just listening to the conversation? If they want to ask a question, they should um, press star nine. And that okay. Has anyone pressed a star nine? I do not see any uh, phone okay. callers. Okay, great. Then let's go to the next question. Okay. Um... Or any raised hands or however we are. Yeah, there's several things. raised hands, I guess. Sure. Why don't we go to some raised hands? Uh, we have, uh, and I apologize if I mispronounce his name. Um, Emily, if you want to unmute Iwa Kulagowska. Can you unmute? Yes. Yes. Yes, uh, I'm wondering if you could give us some some background on the design team that has been chosen to do this work, and uh, is it percent 
number one, one percent. Who are they? What work have they done before? Have they been in Boston for a length of time? Are they Bostonians? Thank you. I'm not sure that I heard all of it, but I think they want to know uh, about the design team. Oh, uh, so the design team that is uh, that was shown in one of the slides. They are some of the best designers in not only the greater Boston, New England, Massachusetts area around the country. Uh, I'm not uh, overstating or understating by saying I think we have some of the best of the best that are doing work and many of them actually are having officers in Boston. Thank you. Next question. Uh, we have um, Cookie Joe. Um, Emily, if you could unmute, please. And uh, this is um, an email address, so I don't know if uh, you could please uh, give us your full name and affiliation or address, please. Is that me? Yes. yes. Yeah, my name is Joe Cook. I'm a lifelong uh, South Boston resident. Hi, Joe. Thank you for joining us tonight. How can we help you? Do you have a question? Uh, nice design. I, uh, very nice. Um, I, I, I want to like to see the, uh, the bridge named uh, in memory of... Uh, veterans who passed away from PTSD because we don't have too much for PTSD. I lost a son to it and uh, uh, excuse me for being a little selfish in it, but you know, I know I'm, I've been pressing for a memorial down at the Bourne National Cemetery. I'd like to see you know, a bridge for peace for, for, uh, for our veterans in that respect. Uh, I, had a, I also wrote in some questions. The other one was like the, the uh, vertical members, I'd like to see those galvanized if we could. Uh, you know, the refurbished galvanized uh, post that we're going to use for light post. Are we going to make the structural uh, members? Are they going to be like a tub design, like the uh, like like the big dig? I'm an iron worker, lifelong 35 year iron worker myself, just retired. So, I'd like to see like a, a tub design and stainless steel handrails all above. Uh, I forget what else I wrote there, but that was those are some of the features I'd like to see. You know. Okay, so in the interest of time, thank you so much for your. Uh, your suggestions and uh, our most heartfelt con condolences for the loss of your loved ones. And the whole naming uh, issue is a very passionate and a very uh, personal uh, matter to many, uh, but the city will go through a very thoughtful process to find the right name when it comes to that stage. So thank you, sir, for your comments. Okay, the next person. Uh Steve Hollinger, uh, Emily, can you unmute him, please? Hi, can you hear me? Hi, yes. Steve. Good to see you. Good to hear you. Good to see you. Hi. So I attended every task force meeting, and um, I, I would support a bridge that's about one third the scale of this bridge, a pedestrian only bridge, saving about maybe um, you know fifty to sixty million dollars. Um, I'd like to know. The only public benefit in terms of transit that I'm aware of is saving about seven or eight minutes on a private shuttle ride to North Station. And that didn't, that didn't take into consideration the future Congress Street BRT to North Station, which would be far more efficient. So what I would like from you is a very clear statement exactly what the public transit benefit is, what work with MBTA has been done to identify the public transit benefit of putting buses on Atlantic Ave northbound, and where can I find the documents that illustrate what the public transit benefit of that lane is? And that lane forces this bridge to be three times the scale that it has to be for a pedestrian only bridge. Thank you, Para. Thanks, Steve. So in the interest of time, I will try and give the uh, executive summarized version. Uh, the bridge is designed to give as much flexibility as Chief Osgood mentioned for the next 75 years. There are a variety of scenarios which I really don't want to even think of. Those of you, well, most of us, you know, when we went through the 9-11 scenario, there are, there are situations that uh, may warrant and will warrant additional capacity on this bridge for a very short time, but it is needed. It is when we look at bridges of this nature, we don't look at it just for you know, one scenario. There are multiple scenarios. Uh, so that's one uh, situation. The other situation is when the Moakley Bridge, 
not if when the Moki Bridge gets rebuilt, when the Moki get, Bridge gets rebuilt. Uh, we need, we can't rebuild that bridge and not move traffic in and out of the waterfront area. So there is additional capacity that is needed, but those are moments in time. A significant majority of the time, you will have pedestrians and bicycles, but every once in a while, hopefully not too often, we will need that access capacity. So we will share with you the transit information, Steve, uh, and we'll be happy to keep you engaged as you have, and we appreciate all your assistance and engagement in the bus. Kate, if you can take the next question. Sure. Amber Johnson, Emily, can you unmute, please? Hi, can you all hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Um, I wanted to know if there are possible, um, on behalf of Livable Street, Stacey Thompson is on the line. Is it possible that you give her um, my unmute authority at this time? Sure, yes, she's on our list. We, we were gonna to get to her. Sir, you'd like, uh, like her to speak for you in your place then? Yeah, for Livable Streets, thank you. Okay, Emily, would you like to unmute Stacey Thompson? Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, we wanted to consolidate our comments so that other folks can get in. Um, as, as you know, I'm a member of the task force, um, and I just want to flag a few things, um, uh, for, especially on public record. Um, but first, I would just like to note that Liberal Streets did, in advance of this meeting, directly express concerns to the project team and Chief Osgood that, you know, we're surprised you're even holding a public meeting right now. My understanding is that there is no federal or state requirement that would require you to have this meeting. And the BPDA has actually stated that to ensure public process is equitable, that they are not holding virtual public meetings for Article 80 or planning studies at this time. Um, and so I just want to flag the inconsistency between city agencies around when meetings need to happen. Um, and then specifically on the project, I would just echo Steve's comments. Um, we have not been able to get a straight answer even previously about MBTA engagement, shuttle use. And I think that if the city has a plan to use this bridge for um, construction mitigation, that there, there needs to be a much more information and clarity about that. It's been mentioned a lot, but, um, you know, are, are there plans? Is it going to happen in a decade? Um, you know, people are seeing walking and biking on the bridge and I think are concerned about that. Um, but lastly, you know, I would say we really appreciate the work that the team has done to think about the walking and biking components, but um, I am deeply concerned that we continue to have issues with the approaches on both ends of the bridge. Um, the designs that were shown tonight are not reflective of NACTO guidelines, of Vision Zero goals, or of modern transportation guidelines to keep people safe. So, you know, the methodology of building the bridge first and then assessing its uses late, later is irresponsible and, and, and not good practice. Um, but you know what we would say is um, that we want to get it right um, and want to figure out the historic preservation piece. So um, yeah, we we want to see people for first to first approach, and we aren't seeing it yet. Thank you. Thank you, um, Emily. Can you unmute, please, Matt White? And after this, let's go back to some of the written comments. Yes, yes. And for all those, uh, Kate, if you could also remind everyone that asked, that we were unable to get to in terms of either a phone call comment or a written comment, you can always uh, send your comments in writing. Kate, if you could finish the button. Yes, so the... Uh... The comments you can send to our email address, uh, team at northernavenuebridgebos.com. Um, the materials from the meeting will be posted on the website, including the recording and the PowerPoint and links to the video. Um, I'm having trouble unmuting Matt White here. So can you go to the oh, next person, please? No, wait, he's unmuted now. Yeah, I just said, how are you? Hi, Matt. Good. I, it was just like, you know, I was just very curious about the presentation was beautiful, but neglected the whole facade. The stairs coming up from the Moakley Courthouse look fabulous, but all the presentations we've been presented 
never showed that as you came to the facade at 88 Sleeper Street in front of Barking Crab, adjacent to the Envoy uh, uh, patio, that, that there was going to be, I don't know, a six to eight foot elevation that is blocking our front door there. So not only are we blocked from the harbor view, we are also blocked from the street view looking towards Moakley Courthouse to the Envoy. But that view was also excluded from the James Hook side as well. So. Matt, I'm not sure I'm catching on to what you are saying. You are, are you representing one of so, the business owners, Matt? Or is it just a general comment? No, I, I'm the general manager at the Barking Crab. You've oh, so, hi, them. Matt. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Matt, so, uh, so we've seen plenty of your presentations that you presented to us, yes, yes. but never have we seen the presentation when you come off of the bridge, the stairs that go down to the left to the Moakley Courthouse. You never showed us the presentation to the right. And, and as that grand presentation curled us to the right, you yes, neglected yes. to say that the elevation was going to cover our front windows, the two bay windows, the front door, and then escalate down towards the tent. So that basically our interior dining room, which faces the Boston Harbor, which will now be obstructed from the elevation of the bridge, but now it's also gonna curl around onto Sleeper Street, which is also gonna prevent all deliveries, all access to our building to zero. So Matt, uh, it's a conversation which we should have uh, continue to have and I'll be happy Matt to connect with you our team will connect with you so that we can give you a more personalized but you know what we've had these conversations many a times and you showed okay. you showed us this video last week and that video that grander grandiose view of this bridge did not include that last week when we were on video conference with you Okay, so um, we're, we may want to move on. This might be a, better to have a conversation um, in a small group because we have um, quite a few people, 85 questions. Um, so I think we might want to move on. Um, we have the Boston Cyclist Union is asking how wide are the two upper ribbons? Also in the video rendering, it looks like there's no physical separation. We've covered that, the HOV physical separation. So um, was the upper ribbon uh, width covered? 24 feet. 24 feet, okay. Uh, let me just scan these. Uh, I hope, uh, Todd Lee, I hope we will be able to use some of the percent for art for illumination of the nighttime icon to the highlight, to highlight the excellent reference to hey, the old. If I, can, if I can, Todd, it is good to see you, Todd. Uh, uh, would love to continue to work with Light Boston and all that you have done. Yes, the accent lighting is absolutely part of this equation and we would continue to seek the Light Boston's guidance, yours and your, uh, your partners, uh, we go back quite a few years, Todd, so absolutely looking forward to the opportunity to uh, seek your guidance and uh, make this bridge all that you know it can be. So thank you, Todd, for joining us this evening. There was a question about what bus um, would serve that. I guess is that, um, again, further work with the MBTA? Somebody wants to know what bus route would serve the bridge? Uh, it, it's an ongoing conversation. The, uh, right now, what we are showing is a bus lane, the route planning and the transit planning for shuttle buses. That's an ongoing conversation. Okay. Um, I'm just scanning these to see what we haven't already covered. Uh, What is the expected cost of the bridge, Mike Uchi? I'm sorry. Mike um, Uchi is asking, what is the expected cost of the bridge? So right now we have about close to about $100 million earmarked for this bridge from a variety of sources. Uh, this coronavirus is not making it uh, easier or it's 
could be a little bit challenging. So over the next couple of months, we will uh, continue to refine those numbers, but uh, it is going to be about 100 plus or thereabouts. Okay. Uh Let's see, wait, I just lost that. Uh, Mark Weber is asking, will there be any commercial entities on the bridge, restaurants, vendors, etc.? cetera? Uh, quick answer, the bridge is supposed to be an uh, area of uh, you know, gathering space. The commercial or programmatic uh, aspects of the bridge is, uh, is a conversation we are having. Uh, so uh, the best answer I can give you is uh, we are exploring all options to see how you can make the area as vibrant as possible. Next question, please. Um, um, Michael is asking about strong wind, you, how it used to, uh, the wind was strong when crossing the old bridge. Has any consideration been given to blocking the wind in the pedestrian areas? Quick answer, uh, during the project development phase, we were looking at sheltering this space, both from rain and wind. Uh, we were given guidance to uh, keep it open right now to sort of let it evolve and see. So it's not a firm yes or no, uh, but you are absolutely correct. It is. Uh, it can be a little bit cold and a little bit windy if you are used to crossing that bridge in the years past. Next question. I'm just scanning them. We have a lot of repeats. Uh, Again, we have about three more minutes, and uh, I hate to because you know it, it is so amazing that there are so many of you that have elected to share your evenings with us. Uh, we continue to uh, seek your guidance or seek your uh, seek your input. Uh, as uh, Miss Barrett stated, you can always send us a comment through the website. Uh, is there? A, did you give the web? They should have the link, right? Uh, yes, the, the website um, is it's on the screen now. Uh, it's on the, yeah, oops. It's awesome. on the screen now. Yep. It is on the screen. Okay, great. And uh, we'll take most maybe one. Sorry, I've Kate. I've scanned most of these questions, um, and it looks like most of them are somewhat similar in terms of cost and some of the questions we've already answered about width and things. In All right, so if I can summarize things. Uh, First of all, again, on behalf of, you know, Mayor Martin, Martin Watt, our beloved mayor, who is absolutely visionary, uh, we appreciate his support. He thanks all of you. Uh, we had both uh, Chief Osgood uh, and my sincerest thanks for all of you for joining us this evening. We are excited about this project. I think it's a bold, beautiful, project uh, opportunity for Boston we all can be proud of and we will continue to seek your guidance to make this even better. Uh, there has been lots of conversations about who uses this bridge and I think the city continues to hear and listen to your concerns so that we can build a structure that can be supportive of all the scenarios that we might Face in the future. So let me see if there are anything else I need to point out. The uh, website yeah. where you're doing that, Para, is, is uh, boston.gov slash northern dash ave av. And you'll see the email address is at the bottom of this slide. All right, so uh, anything else that we can share with these wonderful people that have decided to join us this evening? I believe that's it. As I had said earlier, um, the, the recording, meeting recording and the PowerPoint presentation comment form and the links to the videos will all be, are, most of them are already posted. The recording will be posted as soon as possible. Um, and with that, I think we've reached our 7.30 time. Um, and uh, thank you so much, everybody, for, for your interest and participation. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a safe evening and stay safe. Good night.